In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about gynecomastia or enlarged breasts in men. So my name is Dr. Saif Gallagher. I am a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. And for many years, I have been working with the transgender community. So typically, these are the types of chests that I masculinize. So usually a case of gynecomastia is very straightforward for me with this background in gender affirmation surgery. So let's talk about, first of all, what can cause this. So probably the most common reason we see enlargement of the breasts in the United States is folks who gain weight. This is actually called pseudogynecomastia, meaning it's not actually just the breast tissue that's enlarging, but also everything's enlarging as you gain weight. But oftentimes, once we've ruled out anything else that's going on, we treat it the same as regular gynecomastia. Typically with new onset gynecomastia, we're going to want to check some hormone levels. Usually you can do this with your primary care doctor, look at any new medications. That can be another cause of it. A very typical one is anabolic steroids. That is a very common um, cause of this. And sometimes people will abuse them in order uh, to gain uh, muscle, or sometimes we can see it with marijuana as well. Those are just some of the more common reasons you may have gynecomastia. Very rarely it can be a sign of something worse, especially if it's on one side. So we do need to get it medically checked out first. So once we figured out what's causing it or that there's nothing more serious going on and we know that the gynecomastia or breast enlargement is going to stick around, for example, sometimes even after medications are stopped, we may still see it. There may still be the breast growth there. Then it may be time to consult a plastic surgeon like myself to see what we can do to get rid of it. So in general, there are three main ways to approach this. And the majority of folks I see who have gynecomastia or breast enlargement assigned male at birth were able to get away with what we call a minimally invasive technique. So what we're going to do is make a little incision, hide it underneath the nipple so that scar ultimately is going to disappear, go in and use combination of fishing out that breast tissue. And also oftentimes we'll do some liposuction as well to sculpt the chest at the same time. And this is called a keyhole procedure and is still the most common one I see. If the nipples have enlarged as well, oftentimes we'll reduce them at the same time as doing the keyhole procedure. If the gynecomastia is a little bit worse in that in that there's more sagging of the chest or extra skin, the keyhole alone may not be the way to go. And really, this is a discussion between you and your surgeon. The concern is that if we just go in and remove the breast tissue and ask the skin to shrink back, sometimes it won't. And sometimes it can actually look worse because now you just have deflated um, empty socks on the chest and it really doesn't look good and kind of guarantees another surgery to fix that. So in the in-between stages, there's other things we can do that are somewhat helpful in order to shrink down that skin a little bit. The most common one I use is body tight. It's radio frequency energy that can somewhat shrink the skin. However, it's important to know that the results are variable and option three may be the right answer for this group. So in folks who have a lot of gynecomastia and maybe a fold underneath where the breast is, or especially in folks who have lost a lot of weight, we are going to need to do what I call masculoplasty. So this is something I've published a lot on. I do a lot of these cases, especially for transgender folks, but sometimes also for folks who are assigned male at birth and have this degree of gynecomastia or breast tissue. So what we're going to do is design two incisions. We try to keep them separate if at all possible. And we're going to park these incisions underneath the pec muscles. And then the nipples come off. Oftentimes we have to redesign them because they will oftentimes be enlarged too and go back on on the pec muscle where they belong. Now, thankfully, mainly because of work done in the transgender community, this procedure has evolved a lot in the past few years and we're able to get really nice natural results from it. We've also improved patient experience hugely. This is always an outpatient procedure. Usually my patients rate their pain four out of 10 in the first two days because we do blocks in there and then it gets better from there. Usually about two weeks off work and we don't do drains and my patients can get their binders off real quick. So it's not too much of a hassle and in some patients who have a large amount of gynecomastia or have lost a lot of weight this is definitely a no-brainer and we'll park those incisions right underneath where the pec muscles are.